Hey guys, it's Tuesday, May 7th. Bitcoin's at 63,500. Um, the ETF flows have turned positive yesterday. We had a great 200 uh, million day, so about 3,400 Bitcoin. And uh, today, um, I want to focus on this new video by AAPSK32, uh, which shows these power bands. Um, and so, as you guys know, I'm really a big fan of these power laws. This video is next level. So, let's look at this video. And I want to comment on it. And I think it's, you guys are going to love this video if you haven't already seen it. So, sound. <laughs> Five meters earlier, and we're going to look at all levels. Okay, now we're going to see where are we? Five years ago, we need to nine. Now we're going to see when do we hit a million? Well, we could hit a million in five years of the We did it by 29. Otherwise, it's me for you. The average is me for you. That's kind of where it looks like. So, again, this is a really... I, I have not seen this... Uh, I haven't seen this uh, approach, and I think this approach is, is really interesting. Uh, if you look just at this curve here, it really shows you that our intuition is just not good. I mean, if we are, in fact, going here, if we're going kind of, this is sort of the average case, right? It's 2032, we hit a million. Okay, so 2032 is, you know, eight years from now, right? That would sort of be your average case. Uh, your extreme fast case is sort of 2029, your kind of worst case is 2034. Now, that's 10 years. So it's a little bit faster than kind of the numbers that I ran or, and Giovanni has run. I think we were looking at more like 2034 is your kind of average case. So it's a this analysis shows a little faster, but it's all, it's all in the same ballpark. And with these numbers moving up like this, you, you really a year or two doesn't make that much difference um, in terms of uh, in terms of power law. So I think this is really interesting. It's it's quite amazing to me that these numbers. I think it, let's just go back to here. It's quite amazing that really, if you think about it, that these numbers here, that this point right, which is the point at which um, you line up with five years ahead of time. That point, that point sort of, okay, and we get, uh, we get one more back here. These are kind of all lining up. So we have the 2017 bull market, the 2021 bull market, which in terms of standard deviations is sort of a two standard deviation above, right? Here we're looking at it at five years above, right? Uh, which in a sense is the same same number because... We're sort of saying, you know, one year is at this point almost, um, one year is almost, was almost 100% uh, return here. Uh, here, a year is more, much less. It's more like 50, 60% return. So, you know, again, the math here is the intuition is not great, but it's amazing to me that these numbers all line up like this. And it, it's sort of, again, another just, uh, another kind of proof, I think, that this power law is very, very accurate. Um, and really, I, I think this is a very good... Uh, man, I th this should really give you a ton of belief that we're going to do really well here. Um, also, just look here. We're, we're really below this, this two-year-out kind of number, which is sort of your sort of... 
this is kind of your middle of the road. Like if you did a regression, I think you would find that as sort of your middle, as for your sort of fair value type number. Or just below, this is this number here is just kind of where your fair value is. So we're just below fair value. Um, and yeah, I mean, if I had to guess, I would say, what are we going to do? We're probably going to get in this kind of area, kind of in the next, uh, and let's take a look, see if we have any charts that go out a little bit further. Uh, yeah, so those are, to, I would sort of think we are going to be kind of in this, uh, in this kind of area here over the next two years. So I definitely think we're going to be um, in that sort of plus one band, maybe plus two band here. Uh, plus, sorry, this is a plus three years. This is a plus four years. Could even get all the way up to here. Uh, but, but that is the sort of peak crash market. So I would expect, expect that to be uh, somewhere more like Somewhere, yeah, maybe 2026, okay? So, anyways, I think this whole chart looks very, very healthy, both for the the next couple years and for the next, you know, eight years. And I think I think a million dollars within a decade looks very, 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 very likely, if I, if I had to guess. Um, not financial advice. You guys do your own, uh, your own planning. Um, one other thing I just wanted to mention on this video, I think why are people missing this trade so much? And I really think it has to do with risk tolerance for short-term pain. So let's say you get involved in Bitcoin. Uh, what's the chance that you are going to lose 20% of your money over the next month? Well, it's actually pretty high, right? Like there, there's a reasonable chance that you lose 20% of your money on mark to market in the next month. That's what Bitcoin does, you know. And often when you're when things look the best, that's exactly when it uh, decides to go 20% to the downside. So I think people intrinsically know that and they they intrinsically fear that sort of immediate Loss. Oh, I did something stupid. I'm stupid. I lost twenty percent. Um, whereas, if I think if you put your money in the stock in the index fund, S and P five hundred, you know the chance of you losing twenty percent within the next within the next two months or three months is, is very is almost zero. Right? You, you know, you could have a major crash in the S and P, like we did in uh, you know March of two thousand, but. You know, most often you may, you might lose five percent max. You might lose ten percent, but it's, it's it's very unlikely that you lose twenty percent. And if you do, everybody else is going to lose it too. So you're kind of you have this sort of confirmation. Well, I just did as bad as everybody else. Whereas if you have this, uh, if you go into Bitcoin, which is sort of this very odd investment, you know, you're you're kind of stepping outside the crowd. And you're wrong, right? You have this psychological fear aversion, um, this loss aversion, and all of a sudden you pick the thing that the crowd didn't pick, and you were wrong. So I think that's the psychological framework. Um, you know, if you look at Tarkovsky um, and uh, uh, I forget the other guy's name, Kahneman, and uh, you know, I think. I think this is this is sort of a human psychology. People don't like being they don't they really don't like being wrong in over the short term, and I think that's what uh, I think that's what um, what stops people from investing in Bitcoin. I mean, they can invest for a little bit of their money, but like taking risking twenty percent of your money, risking twenty percent of your money. It is it's too much for most people. So there's just this amazing loss aversion that's that's set in. Uh, I, I think it was always there to some extent. I think it's there more now uh, than it that it always has been. But people are willing to take mediocre performance over the risk that they they can experience short term loss. 
Anyways, that's uh, this episode, and I hope you love my content. If you do, hit subscribe, and uh, and again, thanks to AAPSK32. Fantastic uh, graph, and uh, if you ever want to be on my show, hop on, man. I'd love to, I'd love to go over numbers with you. Thanks a lot, and uh, hit subscribe. Thanks. Bye.